Um, Simon says, touch your shoulders. Simon says, touch your, touch your, uh, touch your toes. Touch your toes. <laughs> si um, Simon says, touch your belly. belly. Touch your ears. <laughs> Simon says, touch your nose. Simon says, touch your shirt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Gracie, can I ask you a question? Uh, well, it was pretty fun, wasn't it? Bossing the church around, telling all the adults to do things. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Just one little person telling everybody to do stuff. Yeah, that was pretty cool. What if I were to tell all of you children, I'm talking to the children right now, what if I were to tell you that it only takes one person, just like the Simon Says game, just you, to make a big difference and change a whole group of people? Do you believe me? Hmm? Maybe. Did you know that God can just use one of you to do great big things? It's true. Can any of you tell me how much it would cost to build a church like this one, a brand new one? A couple million dollars, yeah, Savannah? $300. $300, yeah. Yeah. Five billion dollars? Three thousand. Pardon? A hundred? Yeah, it would cost a lot of money. I don't know for sure how much it would cost. But it would be a lot of money, wouldn't it? Nine million. Nine million, probably. It would be a lot of money. But did you know, can I ask you guys another question? Who can tell me what a parable is? See who was paying attention this morning. What? A parable is a, is a story that teaches you valuable, valuable lessons. That's right. A parable is a story that teaches you valuable lessons. Good job, Raymond. It teaches you something important about God and something that God wants us to know about him. That's what a parable is. And this morning, children... I am going to teach you a parable. I want to tell you a story about a little girl who is the same age as you. And I want you to listen to how God can use one person who is your age to do something really big. And I want all the grown-ups to hear this too. Well, I have a microphone, so you probably will. There once was a little girl. And she was sad because all of her school friends went to Sunday school every Sunday morning. She was sad because she lived very near the church, and she always watched as her friends went by to Sunday school. But her family never went to church on Sunday morning. One day, this little girl did something that none of you should ever do. She got up bright and early one Sunday, she put on her best Sunday dress, and she snuck out of her house while her parents were still asleep. She was finally going to go to Sunday school. She waited for a group of friends outside of her house to walk by, and they were very surprised and excited to see her, and they invited her along to Sunday school. She got to the church. She was so excited. She went up the great big stairs. She went through the great big hallway. She turned left and went through the classroom door. And do you know what she saw? That's right. There were no chairs left for her to sit on. Did that make her upset? Yeah. Yes, this made her so sad that she burst into tears. And she ran through the big hallway and down the big stairs and sat at the bottom, and she cried and cried. Just then, the pastor of the church came by and saw her crying. The sobbing little girl who sat on the stairs of the small church from which she had been turned away because it was too full said to the pastor, I can't go to Sunday school. She cried to the pastor as he walked by. Seeing her, the pastor guessed there had been no room in the classroom, but taking her by the hand, he took her inside and found a place for her to sit in her Sunday school class. The little girl was so happy that after church, when she ran home, she forgot 
that she snuck out of her house (laughs) while her parents were sleeping. They were so worried about her. They saw her coming and ran up to her and gave her a big hug, and she was told that she was grounded. That's right, grounded. No going out for two weeks. You guys were listening. That's great. The little girl had such a great time in Sunday school, it didn't bother her. And she went to bed that night thinking about all of the children who have no place to worship Jesus on Sunday mornings. Well, she never actually got to go back to the church. And after this day had happened two years later, what we didn't know was that this little girl was very, very sick. And she had gone home to be with Jesus. This is sad, isn't it? Their parents remembered that the minister of this church was kind to their daughter, and so they called him to handle the funeral arrangements. After they got home from her funeral, the little girl's mommy was cleaning up her room a little, and she noticed something. It was an old, wrinkled envelope. And the little girl's mommy opened it up, and inside she found 57 cents. Is that a lot of money? What can you buy for 57 cents? Gum. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, you could. Yeah, and so, and, and with the 57 cents, there was a note, and the note read this. This money is to help build the little church bigger so more children can come to Sunday school. For two years... This little girl had saved everything she had to offer with love. When the pastor tearfully read the note, he knew instantly what he would do. Carrying this note in the cracked envelope to the pulpit, he told the little girl's story of her unselfish love and devotion. He challenged his church to get busy and raise enough money for a larger space. But the story doesn't end there. A newspaper learned of the story, and they came and published it. It was read by a real estate agent, someone who sells land, who offered this small church some land worth a lot of money. When told that the church couldn't afford it, he offered to take 57 cents for it. The church members made large donations. Checks came from far and wide. Within five years, the little girl's gift had increased from 57 cents to $250,000. That is a lot of money today, but it was even more money a hundred years ago. Her unselfish love had a lot of money, and God used her 57 cents to do something amazing. One little girl with 57 cents. That's not a lot of money, is it? And she wasn't a grown-up, was she? This goes to show you, and I want you to hear this, children. God can do a lot with you. It starts with you. Just like in Simon says, you can start something. You can move and God wants to use you. All you have to do is love people. That's what he wants. And you want to know something? Some people say that this parable is a true story or that only parts of it true. But remember, I said this is a parable. And you remember what a parable is, right? A story that teaches us something important about God. What does this teach us about God? Does it matter how small you are? No. No. Does it matter how much money you have? No. Does it matter how old you are? No. Nope. He wants to love you all exactly the same way that you are, and he wants us to love others. And if we do just that, God will be pleased. I'm going to talk to the grown-ups for a second. Is that okay? Thank you. What... Does this parable say to us as the church? This is a question that I ask myself all the time. Are we willing to be uncomfortable for our children so that there will always be room for them in our church family? Can we take the point from this parable and see how God can use our children to move mountains? Because how much faith did it say it takes? Mustard seed, that's right. I want us to look at a Bible verse today. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. That's Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. 
and I want to see what Jesus has to say about children in his kingdom. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, which of us is greatest in the kingdom? Jesus called a small child over to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I assure you, unless you turn from your sins and become as little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is, the greatest in the king, they will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. In Matthew 19, verse 13 and 14, it's Matthew 19, 13 and 14, tells us, some children were brought to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. The disciples told them not to bother him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to the such of these. These two passages, through these two passages, it is clear that Jesus has a profound love for children. And he says that the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Isn't it amazing to see the amount of energy that my worship team, the powerhouse worship team has here on the stage? And I think we need more of this. We need to continue to be a place that children feel safe and welcome. They're opened up, ready to worship Jesus for everyone to see. Hear me. I don't want to be that pastor that walks by and sees a little child crying on the front stairs because there's no room for her. I want her to be free to walk through these doors and meet with Jesus maybe for the first time. Our Sunday morning programs are more than just a good idea. They're more than just watching the children while parents are in church. It saves people's lives. We are introducing children to the living God. And I have stated these facts again and again, but I will continue to state them again and again. We have the greatest chance to meet children or meet Jesus as children. Studies have showed that time and time again. And some of you might think, well, that's manipulative. Some of you might think, well, that's wrong. But McLean's Magazine this month, just po- this month released an article saying, that a child that grows up believing in God has a better chance of being confident and a 60% chance of dealing with depression, as a, or 60% less chance of dealing with depression as a teenager. God makes a difference in a child's life. God makes a difference in, in the life of our church. And we need to be a church that's welcoming and accepting of children. And God knows us, and he wants us to love our kids enough to be uncomfortable and to do what is necessary so that they can come here and meet with Jesus, possibly for the first time. Now, I'm not saying that we aren't that church. But what I am saying is that we need to constantly be asking ourselves that question and evaluating how we're doing with making our children feel welcome here. If we look at ourselves and we do see that we could do more, the question we need to ask is, are we willing to take those steps so that we can heed Jesus when he says, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Our children are precious. Where would we be without them? We'd be alone, that's right. We would be. And they add such a vibrance to our community. And it's so clear. And so as we leave this morning, what I, the question I have for you is, are we willing to be uncomfortable so that our children feel comfortable coming here? That's it. Thank you. Now I'm going-